Hey guys, so back to our uh, tutor Tutor 1 Yeah, so we are back to the SQL injection Last Last in, in my last video since We see that we can do some SQL injection through the index public.php but yeah there are some space there are some things that we need to take care of let's just add to the index public okay. yeah Okay, so this particular thing it has a SQL injection vulnerability. So, <coughs> right. Yeah. So last time, there is a place that um, if it's in text PHP, opt and pphd docs filter. So this file. Mm -hmm. I think it's not here, probably in the search frame. Yeah, search frame. So this file. Yeah, exactly in this file. So we have this search frame function. Um, so the thing is, these things, it's the things that are passed to inside the name parameter. They try to did some sanitization but fail to and the name is exploded into a few things based on space as the delimiter. So this is this is going to cause some problem if we are using space in our SQL injection string. So So the thing is, let's take a look. Um, okay, so we can um we can bypass this limitation by doing so that. So this particular thing is a multi line command. It seems to be able to substitute spaces. And yep, that's great. So we'll get to this. Okay. It's not really great, is it? Okay, so the thing is we can we can try our query here using the PLC script from last time so what we do is we this is going to evaluate the false because we don't have such user in our environment so the the only user that I've created is a tutor so right. I mean let's do this first so can show you if I a so the suggestion is add tutor so yeah the previous one is not going to have any output so this is always false 
false or true? True, right. Percent 23, it's the pound sign, which is a common symbol in MySQL. So, right. And there we go. We'll go inside here and look further. So, or true. Yeah, because it's false or true so you still get the un you still get the users out here in fact it should return all users but yeah i have one user in this setup only so right so we can we can try if for if select one equal to zero false false or false is false yeah nothing returns so the main thing we do this is uh, to get the content length, content length of the response. So if it is false, it returns 20. If it's true, it returns more than 20. Then, yeah, we have some POC script here. And yeah, we can just run it. Yeah, I mean, let's take a look at this. So basically, yeah, it's the true thing. What AA is false or true? True, false or false, false. So it call this thing, and it pass a true injection string and expect, and pass a query type true. So if it is true and content length should be more than 20 so it returns true if it's false content length is equal to 20 then returns true otherwise it returns false so so if true then if true then the preprint target is vulnerable so vulnerable yeah. so uh, yeah it's uh, anyway so since we can determine whether a thing is true or false, we can proceed further by doing um, something like this. So we can get the version information of the masker. It probably is not really useful now, but yeah, just to just to get some something I mean just to prove that uh, we can do a blind scale injection to um, it's like a boolean type blind scale injection we can retrieve something from here and maybe through the DNS exfiltration is easier but anyway we are doing it about the, I mean, we are doing it about this thing. So this way. So select version. It starts uh the version of MySQL in my deployment. It's five point six point twenty dash log. So you can see that um, if you select version, and you get a substring. I think this is the starting index and. This is the how many things to cut it. So you can get five. So when you get five, it's one. So if you equal to something else, it's false. False, right, it's zero. So in this way, we can start, we can increase this to like 5.6. No, it's, is it this? Oh yeah, it's a dot. Sorry. Mm, yeah, two one is equal to dot. True. In this way, we can have a script that uh, programmatically do these things and yeah. And yeah, one thing is we can try to convert the character to ASCII. So. 
the reason we do so is that uh, some symbols like dot these things that can be that can mean something to the application itself like what our space did so it's not really good to use this kind of uh, special characters in this in the query um, so yeah we can convert it to ASCII so like ASCII of 53 so So control code printable characters. Yeah, these these are our main focus here. So we can take a look at the A small letter A. Is it? Is it small? Or is it big? No, it's five. Sorry, we are taking we are checking the five. Five. Okay. So its decimal code is fifty three. Right. So right. So we equate to 53. So it's true. We can equate to 54 and everything. Yeah. yeah. So, right. We we'll just test our POC script. I mean, to see whether it works in the request itself. Because um, it's ultimately different from what we do in database directly. So, yeah. We can get our tutor, tutor. When the first one is true, it's 53. So this one, that means true, right? False or true, true. So you return this thing, so you can evaluate that. The first character of the version, it's the ASCII code is 53 in decimal. So yeah, here we go. and. Going to skip this because it's okay. Though, so this is the the other POC script that I've written, but yeah, the output is not exactly the same now because I've made some modification to it. So anyway, it will retrieve the database version length and database database version. Right. And yep. As yes, the version length, database version, and super checking, it has whether that user has super privilege. So the thing is, let's take a look at this POC script. Okay, so uh, there are quite many modifications from the last one. The main limitation is that uh, it's not accepting dynamic, I mean, user input injection string anymore. It's uh, because yeah, I think it's easier to do it in directly in the script that every time we pass it, since we are going to control whatever the things that are. Anyway, it's probably not. A good script but anyway we will call this sqli and then pass the ip so right so the first thing is we retrieve data base version length so what i do is pretty simple for i in 100 basically 0 to 99 then i will say select length version is it equal to 0 is it equal to 1 is it equal to 2 and yeah, content length, if it is more than 20, that means uh, the request is true. Because false or true, right, then you return, you return some things that is more than 20, the response. So the version length is equal to i, so right, so just bring. So uh, the reason to get this database version length is because we are going to use it in this database version, when we are retrieving database version. So right, we are going to get this thing, substring. Yeah. So I is used in this this particular part. And let's 
basically this replacement is sort of redundant um, just it could be improved a bit but anyway this is just some something that I take out from the original script and then yeah modify it according so by the way this 32 and 127 it's the range of the right, 32 is the range of the printable characters of ASCII okay with ASCII so 32 until 126 and big 127 it's because the Python always start with this one until minus one okay I guess you all know that anyway so select version replacement yeah so this this part is basically every time I like replace one until the version nine plus one so it's because we want to retrieve the tenth character because this one is 10 and 1 until 10 is just 1 until 9 right I mean if you put in range so have to plus 1 and yeah, whatever so this thing is doing a similar things it's replacing the injection string in this thing you replace the this replacement with string j so j is the yeah the ASCII curve because yeah we are comparing with ASCII code right so yeah the same thing is it's more than 20 then yeah, you print out the attracted char and then yeah. so the last part is checking whether database user has super privilege and right mm. so I guess this part yeah it's sort of getting select super pre from users where I guess I can use substring here instead of this but um, oh the main reason I use this substring index is because I want to separate it based on this add symbol anyway let's see if I have a detailed note on this um no I don't never mind let's do some simple demo <coughs> let's go dash u select current user right root at user so if I select substring index one thing should be this symbol and this thing is it right you can see we get this part is one so it's root so anyway I haven't so that asterisk from my sql.user so you can see there's a host and user yeah that's why I want to split it in two parts I mean root is probably not so realistic in terms of production system but yeah anyway uh, so right. so basically yeah this is the same thing we did uh, super brief so super brief to right and then this one we do the same things that like we compare to is it y um is it necessary i put in ASCII but should be fine since it's right anyway let's uh yeah, this is the test using POC1 and I mean to test the string whether it works yeah 
then we have our last thing, POC3. I'm just gonna do it again for the sake of completeness, but okay, yeah, you have seen it before. So, right. And yeah, I think we are done here for this video. Thank you for watching. Anyway, right.